My name is Zhongnan Wang from Georgia Tech. I'd like to give a special introduction on our piezo phototronics. We have been working in this area started in 2006. Uh, the first time we introduced piezo phototronics was 2010, and which used the piezoelectric effect, coupling piezoelectricity, photocitation, and a semiconductor properties. If you look at this diagram, which illustrates freeway coupling, semiconductors, piezoelectricity, and a photocitation. This is the piezotronics area and the piezophotonics area. Among the three here is the piezophotonic area. What is about? Which is about if you have a semiconductor and piezoelectric material on the mechanical strain, you have a polar charge present at the PA junction here. The presence of this polar charge will tune the charge carrier transport, separation, or recombination process, which is the core of piezophotonics. Let's look at basic. When did we start? This was back in 2010. We have a single nanowire photo detector. If you apply mechanical strain, we have polar charge created to a negative ion here, positive ion here. We have a piece of potential cross. On, on the mechan on the photo excitation, what happens? Photo excitation can change the barrier height, lower the short barrier height in the metal and semiconductor. But the piezoelectric can increase the barrier height. One can count the other one. Let's look at the early day experiment. This is a long zinc oxide nanowire across this one. We can focus a laser point at the P1, P2, and P3. Then you see the transport curve across along this nanowire here. As you see, laser at the point P1 is the red curve. And the P3, at both junction here, it is this blue curve. And at the middle is this green curve. It's the green curve is very similar to the dark curve. It's because this dark curve and green curve is only when the laser, no laser or laser shine in the middle of the network. But those two excite the two end contact. So this was the observation back then. But it triggered us to think the controllability of one against the other one. So therefore, we have a substrate. We have a nanowire on the back. So you bend the nanowires, you introduce tensile strain in this nanowire, in, in this nanowire here. This is the substrate. Bend the substrate, produce tensile strain in, in nanowires. Then you see the bend the transport. Before you bend, apply the strain, which is the transport like this, then as you apply the strain, you can see the curve become a red, green, and a blue. This is 0.39% tensile strain applied. Become a diode. This is the only contact become a diode. The reason is because, and originally there's probably no shock to bear. When you apply the strain, you create a polar charge at the interface. We can create a barrier. This created barrier induces this transport behavior. So therefore, the presence of the polar charge due to the piezoelectric effect can create a barrier if there's no barrier. If you originally have a barrier, this can increase the barrier height or decrease the barrier height. So this was the first case. The second case has been something this way. So the, the nanowire on the compressive strain. On the compressive strain, you can see this was the original transport. Then you are, on the compressive strain, you become a red curve, the green curve, and a blue curve. The blue curve is 0.39% compressive strain. This behavior is exactly opposite to this. See, this is a positive bias, this is a reverse bias. And this, this change, here change this side, here change, change this side. See the gigantic reverse behavior of the two? This is due to the presence of polar charge here or here. Depends on your applying tensile strain or compressive strain. Then we can utilize laser to counter the other one. We can use a laser to turn the lower the shoulder barrier. Use piezo to raise the barrier. You can see this is the laser does. Laser can lower the barrel. Laser can always lower the barrel. It cannot raise the barrel line. So therefore, if you tune right and the right strain, the piezoelectric effect, raise the barrel height, equals the, the barrel height, lowered by laser, two, two cancels, one cancels with the other one. You see this blue curve, the, the green curve here? The, the dark curve was the original curve. The green curve was the on the 
0.2% compressor strain, and the laser intensity is 0.01. One cancel the other one. This is the original of piezo phototronic effect. So look at the same thing about physics. What is happening? For a pH junction, you normally have P type and N type. When you become physical contact, you have a charge depletion zone here. Charge depletion zone, if one side has piezoelectric effect, you apply mechanical strain, polar charge created. Polar, negative polar charge raise the local barrier. If you change to compressive strain, tensile strain here, you have positive ion, positive ion lower the local barrier a little bit. Lower local barrier. You can see this small change apply different strain, produce different sign of polar charge. You can raise the barrier or lower barrier here. This can gigantic change the transport behavior of the carrier and interface. So piezoelectric effect can utilize this to turn the to tune the carrier recombination, which is for, for uh, uh, LED or carrier separation, which is for solar cell. And so to make it simple, the piezoelectric charge can tune the local band slightly on tensile strain, on compressive strain. Also can shift the, the diffusion zone to the right hand side or to the left hand side because the positive ions repel the P-type doping. They shift the diffusion zone to the right hand side or negative ions repel the negative doping here to the left hand side. So this shift the diffusion zone as well as the change of band can gigantically change the short key barrier, the, the, the gigantic change of the optical electronic process at the interface. And this is the fundamental of piezoelectronic phototronic effect at the PN junction. I use two examples to illustrate to you. Number one is LED. We have done all this case here, which are all covered in the book. Here to show LED. We make a N type of zinc oxide and a P type gallium nitride make LED. 0% strain to 0.1% compressed strain. Look at the emission light. It's gigantically enhanced. Why is such a huge enhancement? This huge enhancement is because we introduce a charge channel at the interface. Let's say the P-type and type band structure here. If you have a pixel charge uh, from the left-hand side, uh, zinc oxide, this produces a charge channel here. The mobility of the electron is a lot higher than uh, holes, so that the transport of the electrons large dictate the recombination rate of the carriers to produce a photon. So when you apply a mechanical strain, you produce a polar charge. This the polar charge only a couple of atomic layer thick at the interface. This charge channel can momentarily trap the electrons to produce more photon emissions here. And this is being attributed to the fundamental mechanism of uh, piezoelectric phototronic effect for enhance the emission intensity of LED. Well, is this true? Does this truly exist here? So we did the uh, band structure calculation here. This is show that we have a 0% strain, and this is the P-type, this is the N-type. After applying 0.03% compressive strain, you can see, see that the depletion zone shifts to the right hand side. Same time, that there's a, a, a charge channel being created. And this charge channel is associated with the, 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 the magnet we talked about. That if you apply a tensile strain, the depletion zone shifts to the A type here, it disappears of the charge channel, which is just what we refer to to explain our data. We're not only satisfied with one LED. So we manufacture 22 nanowires, and the root of each is a zinc oxide gallium nitride interface, each with an LED emitter. So you can see, if you apply a stamp to this, the stamp can change the barrier height and locally, so emission line will be different. If you vary from one pixel to the next pixel, you can use the emitted light to detect the strain applied locally. Why? Because the depth of this charge channel the strain applied, it's a piezoelectric effect. 
the more strain applied or more pressure applied, the deeper the, the traffic well, more light emission here. So measure the emission light in the, the, the well depths. You can map the distribution, the, the characters across the, the entire array. This is 22,000 nanowires and produce this kind of pattern here. And this is the true device we fabricate here. We use this one as a new way to map the strain distribution across the board. This was the LED meter of the nanowires. Each is the emitted light. Okay? You, can, you can characterize this one. We'll find the emission light intensity scales linearly with the uh, strain we apply. Linearly with the strain applied, and this is the enhancement factor with light emission here. Utilize this, we can map the distribution of the patterns across the board. You have five letters, P I E Z O, P Z O, which is stamp. Press on this on 0% strain, on 0.15% compressor strain. You can see this emission LED emitter letters clearly. This has a resolution about one and a half or close to one micron, which is unprecedented, better than any technology we know today. Also, this does not need a scan. One snapshot gives you this, this strain distribution or map to map the character across the board. And this shows a piece of phototronic effect using in, in LED for strain mapping uh, based on light emitted signals. Okay. So this is the array of the devices. Second example I'd like to show you is electrochemical process. Can be also choose by piece of phototronic effect. If you have a uh, electrochemical process, normally have the oxidation reduction energy levels here. How does it match the semiconductor with those energy levels to tell the charge separation here? Now, let's illustrate this one. We fabricate devices with photo excitation to generate electron hole pairs. The separation between the electron and the hole is determined by the, 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 the geometric shape of the band. If you use the piezo effect, raise the band, raise the Short barrier here, which accelerates the electron separation and at the same time does not decrease the separate the holes to the beneficial electrochemical process. But now, if you use piezo effect in the wrong way, you lower the barrier, you dis lower the barrier here, you decelerate the electron separation, but you could, does not affect the hole separation. So, decelerate electron separation here drops efficiency. This accelerates electron separation. Increase efficiency. So this is with with experimental measurement on the electrochemical process. You find that on some of the strain here, you enhance the current, you drop, you reduce the current. On the other case, this strain here reduce the current here. Now you increase the current. So this change is referred to the case I refer to here. Use the piezoelectric effect to tune the electrochemical process, which can have many applications to show. I'd like to show you a recent example. This is the very titanium part metal cubes. On the surface of superoxide, superoxide can be a good electrochemical catalyst here. If you have BTO cube on the solid wave, you find that the polar charge increase. This is a electric effect. Negative ion here, positive ion here. If the superoxide particle attached here, which have the electron and the whole pairs, Due to the positive ion here, which attract electron towards the interface, so these are the holes on the surface. In contrast, this side is negative ion, which attracts the holes to the interface. Leave the electron at the, inter at the surface. Electron here, holes here, accelerated electron uh, redox reaction here. One side can be reduction, the other side can be uh, uh, oxidation, which accelerate. You can see the data shows that. This is the only have the sonar, so, so, uh, sonic wave. You can see this is a little degradation to the, to the, to the to chemicals. Now, if you only apply photons, you can have the effect here. You can see the, this is the silver, with the PTO is silver nanoparticle, which is the pink curve here. But now, if you put the sonic wave citation and the photon citation together, you can see the pink curve is here, which is the best of all. This is enhancement. Super, only have a super particle, this is a super particle. This enhancement is due to the piezoelectric effect enhanced. 
electrochemical process at the two surfaces here. We can apply at a nano scale a sonic wave enhance a chemical process uh, for uh, chemical uh, degradations or reductions. So I show you that piezophotonics is a three-way coupling between semiconducting piezoelectricity and photoexcitation, which is why triangle here. And this can be useful LED, solar cell, photo detector, as well as electrochemistry. And uh, if you need to learn more about this one, the fundamental of this effect being introduced at, in this book, and, uh, which is about uh, basic physics, uh, basic uh, structure here. And uh, with that, I hope this will give you a good introduction what the physics behind it, what's the exciting thing you can do. But more importantly, this can be quantum effect. At the interface, you have one layer polar charge, which can gigantic affect a single electron transport. Also can affect the spin transport. Can also affect this uh, uh, single, this uh, quantum transport across the interface. So I bet at low temperature, there's more interest in quantum, quantum mechanical effect, which can be tuned by the piezoelectric effect, which is a piezo photonics at low temperature. In other words, quantum piezoelectronics. Thank you. So in the summary, we have been studying the coupling between the three different properties. Traditionally, semiconductor and photoexcitation are important areas. Piezoelectricity, they use PCT materials. So separate the two fields in uh, by choice of materials. Now they use the wood structure, like gallium nitride, zinc oxide. You bring them together. You form new field. Piezotronics, piezophotonics, and at the three junction area is piezo phototronics. And those are three fundamental new effects. Piezotronic effect called piezoelectric positive charge tune and control charge carrier transport at interfaces and junctions, which was first proposed in 2007. Piezophototronics effect is regarding to piezoelectric position tune carrier separation or recombination in optoelectronic process, which was first proposed in 2010. Lastly, piezophotonic effect is a piezoelectricity position potential induced photon emission process, which was first proposed in the in 2008, experiment observed in 2014 and 15. So those three fundamental new effects, regardless of what material you use in this one, can open many new exciting applications and the fundamental science remain to be studied in the near future. Thank you very much.